So it's been 50 years since Kubrick made this movie and I finally got a chance to see it in the theater. Now I've seen it a couple of times before, but actually not that many, maybe four times in total. And it's probably been a good six years or something, maybe more even, since I last saw it. I do know I've seen it in HD once before, on my old 32 inch TV. Before that I saw it on DVD and before that I saw it on TV, way back when, in the 90s. I might have been eight, maybe not even. We had one of those big bulky CRTs that my cat used to sleep on. And the movie was probably grainy and most likely cropped to fit the screen. The boxy 4-3 aspect ratio. So it was probably not very cinematic. But you know what? That iconic imagery, the monolith, the space station, the red glowing murderous computer, the eerie chorus, the classical music, that's all been stuck in my head ever since. This thing redefined what a movie could be to me. And on some level it's what I've compared every other movie to ever since. And so far, in my 30 years on the planet, I haven't seen anything like it. It might be the most ambitious movie ever made. And I don't see it getting surpassed in that regard anytime soon. Now that being said, I don't claim to understand it. But I do think I get the gist of it. But I've also never been one to really analyze movies. It just feels sort of pointless. Either you get something out of a movie or you don't. It's a very subjective and personal experience. So why try to project some sort of objective truth or meaning onto it? It's a little bit silly. Now you can analyze this movie to death and people have. But at the end of the day, I don't really know what I'd get out of that. To me, it's just a deeply profound movie for reasons I can't really explain. And it's a technical marvel, for reasons that are much more accessible. I mean, some of the techniques they developed for this movie are still being used today. And some of the shots are just mind-boggling. Now, a few of them I immediately knew how they did, but they're still perfectly executed, with some clever cuts and editing. But there's at least a few scenes I'm not really sure how they did. Usually when you see special effects from like 20-30 years ago, you can pretty easily figure them out. And even if you can't, they usually don't impress you that much, visually. But there's still stuff in this that's just so well done that you can't help but to admire it. And all the attention to detail, from the work on the miniatures, to the spinning backgrounds outside the windows, and the sticky shoes they wear to keep from floating off, and the framing and the cinematography, it's all just impeccable. Even the acting felt a little bit more grounded and natural than a lot of movies from that era. Now admittedly, some things haven't aged that well, which is inevitable. Technology advances and this is science fiction after all. But considering it is science fiction, I'd say it's held up remarkably well. And I will say that the monkey costumes actually looked better than I remembered. To put it into perspective, Planet of the Apes came out the same year. Now compare the two costumes and there's no question which one has aged better. Kubrick even had articulated lips on his and more detail on the faces themselves. But then we do have things like the Stargate sequence and some of that looks great still. But some of it is just random shots of deserts and oceans with the saturation cranked up to a million. That's not that impressive these days. Now, I don't know how that was done back in the day, or if it even was impressive to the audience, but that's easily my least favorite part of the movie, and the part that hasn't aged well at all. And then we have things like the images of Earth, that are obviously matte paintings, and that's not really that impressive these days. But you also have to keep in mind that this was the late 60s. CGI wasn't an option, and there were no high quality color images of Earth available. And we have things like the picture phone, which as an idea was pretty cool, but the camera and screen technology just weren't there. They're both big and bulky, simple limitations of the era. But then on the actual spaceship itself, they have something like tablet computers on the table. Now we never see them actually move because there's obviously big screens embedded into the actual table, but they're made to look all thin and sleek. And it's details like that that just makes this movie so great, decades later. But what surprised me the most was probably all the silence. And there's a lot of it. And not just a lack of score with some ambient sounds. I mean complete silence. 
And after seeing this in the theater, I get why very few movies do that these days. Because it's actually pretty uncomfortable. Almost suffocating. You don't want to make the slightest noise. Because the whole theater will hear it. But it was an interesting experience. What I also realized for the first time though, was that in the middle of this grand, epic, ambitious movie, there is this quaint little sci-fi story that could have been its own movie. And in the hands of another filmmaker, it probably would have been the whole movie. I'm of course talking about the whole trip to Jupiter with Hal. That's essentially a self-contained sci-fi thriller. And it's a damn good story too. Well thought out and executed. But it's really just one small part of this massive movie. Speaking of which, imagine being on set for that last sequence. There's a space vehicle parked in some sort of weird mansion with lit up floors. You're wearing a space suit and you're watching yourself as an old man eating steak. But for some reason, you just trust that Stanley's got you covered and knows exactly what he's doing. And apparently he did, because this is one hell of a movie. So if against all odds you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor. Go watch it. I know it's long and slow and artsy and kind of pretentious, but just do it or don't. You don't have to. And I'm not your dad.